This morning, the FAA is announcing new airline regulations to reduce pilot fatigue. The rules were inspired by the 2009 Colgan air crash near Buffalo that killed 50 people. The co-pilot had traveled all night just to get to work. Former NTSB Chairman Mark Rosenkurt led the investigation of that crash. He's now a CBS News transportation safety analyst, and he joins us this morning. Mark, it's good, good to see you here this morning. Good to be with you as well. Okay, pilot fatigue not determined to be the sole factor in the Colgan crash. So how, how did it lead to today's announcement? Well, when the investigation uh, goes through the NTSB, uh, the board took a look at the 72-hour history of both pilots. And they did uh, conclude that the activities that they were involved in during that 72 hours actually could create fatigue. But with that said, there were so many other factors that clearly were at fault in this accident that uh, there was a real discussion of whether fatigue played a major role. But that wasn't the real issue. Fatigue has been an insidious cause of so many incidents and accidents that the NTSB has studied. It's been on their most wanted list for at least 20 years. And they're going to make a major announcement later today. Let's talk about the current rules for pilots now regarding work and rest time. What are the current rules and how might they change? Right now, a maximum duty day, and that means from the time you sign in till the time you sign out and go out, uh, is 16 hours. Your actual flight time, which is the time behind the stick of the aircraft, can be as much as eight hours. And then you're really only right now required to have eight hours of rest between the next duty shift. That needed to be changed. And frankly, it was too long in coming, and I look forward to what these changes are going to be announced today. Well, let me ask you this. As an expert in the field, how much of a difference will this make in your estimation? I think it will be an, in a significant improvement. We will be raising the bar of safety with these new rules. It would seem that we're going to see some additional rest time, perhaps an hour, maybe more. We're going to probably see reduced duty days. We'll probably go from 16, maybe to 14 or 13. And they're really going to be looking at the kind of flying that you're doing. For example, if you're flying overnight, it's a lot more stressful and a lot more difficult if you're going than, than flying all day. So they'll be looking at the kinds of flying and giving you the kinds of maximums that you'll need in the, in the nature of the actual flight. You mentioned a moment ago that you thought these regulations were long overdue. Why has it taken so long to implement something that seems pretty obvious for most listeners? Chris, this is... This, this is, these rules were propagated back in the 40s and 50s when, in fact, we had four members of a flight crew, a flight engineer, a co-pilot, a pilot, a navigator. We didn't fly as far. We didn't go into the time zones that we do today. Today, we're dealing with cockpit crews of two people that are flying, uh, in, in, in some cases, three and four and five time zones. It was necessary to make these changes to bring us up to the 21st century. All right, Mark, thanks so much. Good to talk with you this morning. That's Mark Rosenker for us. Good to be with both of you. All right.